What's up, guys? Matt Brown here from the LSR Podcast. Thanks for joining me and Dustin and Adam right here on the channel each and every week. And while you're here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments if there's anything you'd like us to tackle in a future episode. But without further ado... Uh, Dustin, let's close things off here with another OPR article. You mentioned just now a little bit about the online casino industry and really how well it's been doing and how it's been pretty much outperforming what even the, the, the best projections could have been in, in all of this. I mean, we see in New Jersey where it's actually a fairly mature market and the numbers just continue to keep going up and up. So why are we not seeing this be more of a priority across the states? Yeah, interesting. Uh, another, again, another, we we're always citing great Brad Allen pieces, I think, on here. He did one kind of looking at online casino startups versus sports betting. And it is curious, like we, we're, uh, you know, I, you know, as soon as Passable fell, I was taking calls from or emails from people almost, not daily, but uh, a few times a week about people wanting to get into the sports betting space. And uh, what 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 takes what it takes to be a startup? What it takes to succeed? And uh, just a lot of people who had really had no idea what they were getting into, trying to get into regulated sports betting in the United States. And online casino has not really been the same. And uh, it's, 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 I think the impetus even was uh, Chris Grove, former publisher of all of all of our sites, says uh, see a ton of startups that are aiming to reinvent the online sports book, but then basically none that are looking to reinvent the online casino. So. We, there's not a really great answer to why. I mean, the big, the best answer is that we only we have a limited market for online casino. We're really looking at New Jersey and Pennsylvania, Michigan coming online soon. Delaware is is basically a, a, a one operator through the lottery. Nevada only has online poker. So you're kind of looking, you gotta look down the road for for more online gambling options that are outside of sports betting. And it's not at all clear what's going to happen. You know, you have people say, oh, well, we could use this revenue from online casino at the state level, but there's, it's just a harder, harder thing to get done at the state level and to, to legalize it. So, um, you know, there, there is room for, for innovation and for, for, for somebody to get in and, you know, make a little bit more on, on online casino. We have the gold nugget that it's a, it will be a publicly traded entity that's based, mostly based on online casino gaming instead of sports betting. And you know, Rush Street is, same and it's it's kind of equally footed in both sports betting and casino but there's there's a room for that to come and where it's going to come from i don't know or if it will come at all but uh you know there's you know a pennsylvania market and a michigan market that are that are not uh, fully mature new jersey is not even fully mature as we've seen so there, there's room to do this and uh you know brad kind of lays out the the whys and, and what the path forward is for it uh, as piece at online poker report Adam, there was a great Twitter thread by uh, Matthew Primo. If you guys are familiar with the name, he was a founder of DFS site called Victive back in the day. That sold to the Stars Group. The Stars Group then, as you know, turned it into BetStar. Long, 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 long chain events here. He moved into FoxBet. Anyway, he he has now moved on from there. But a, a nice little chain about you know, whenever the past befell, kind of like Dustin said, he was getting emails on the daily about people talking about all this stuff. Well, he said he was getting pitches all the time about, you know, oh, this is how we're going to, this is how we're going to change the, the market. This is how we're going to change what's going on in sports betting. I think the same could be mirrored here when we talk about casino as well. He goes, as part of the thread, it gets down to the point where he just says, at the end of the day, you need a ton of money because you are going up against these companies that have a ton of money. So basically, I think when it all comes down to it, if you might have the best idea to, to figure out a niche inside of either one of these industries, but if you do not have the proper backing and the proper funding, it's probably going to be very hard to get any traction. Uh, there's not a lot I can add to that thread, quite honestly. It was very well thought out, very nuanced. Um, and only a couple of little things that I would tack on to what Dustin just said uh, about the potential growth of, of online casino. One is, I think just from the public perception side, we talk about that there aren't many markets. It's just a different sell. Uh, it's very easy to walk into a legislator and say, this is something that's already happening in sports betting. You just need to capture the revenue and tax it and make money off it. That's a lot different when you say, I play March Madness in an office pool versus where am I playing slots? Where am I playing roulette, right? Like it's, it's just not the same um, in terms of being able to make that argument, even if people are finding ways. But 
the other piece that, that I would bring into this is that, uh, you know, I, I think Chris Groves point is very well taken of that. No one is trying to reinvent the, the online casino space. And those who were trying to reinvent the sports betting space, you can't reinvent a space that doesn't exist. Uh, we, we had no idea what a nationwide market looks like. And I think everyone outside of Nevada, you and I, Matt, obviously know differently here in Las Vegas has a very antiquated notion of what sports betting is. Uh, a very antiquated idea of having to walk up to a counter where I don't understand anything that's going on. And, you know, every guy is sitting there with a cigar and a floppy hat trying to get one over on someone. And if that's your impression and you think you're going to create a new, uh, new option in that space, then I don't think you're starting with the, uh, with the right case study in the first place. So, you know, the cross sell opportunity is obviously huge when it comes to sports betting and casino. Uh, I think, you know, DraftKings, FanDuel, PointsBet, Barstool, you know, if we ever see a, a major push from, from 365, like you see all these casinos that have the opportunity to use that sports betting funnel to move people into casino and be able to diversify the revenue. And that's where you really have to look at the DFS companies and say, not only do they have a DFS funnel to bring DFS players into sports betting, they can bring them DFS to sports betting to casino or even DFS to casino. So a really interesting part of the space uh, to watch and one that even though we talk a lot about sports betting should not be ignored. Guys, as a reminder, the full version of this podcast can be found over at LegalSportsReport.com as can the written breakdown of every topic we talk about on the show each and every week. Thanks for watching.